We have been given the scientific knowledge, the technical ability, and the materials to pursue the exploration of the universe. Something strange is happening with the moon. Is it decreasing? The Earth's natural satellite is shrinking as its interior cools, getting more than about 150 feet skinnier over the last several hundred million years. Because of the moon's surface crust being so brittle, the crust breaks as the moon shrinks. This shrinking is causing wrinkles all along the moon's surface. This forms thrust faults, which produce moonquakes. According to the images from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the moon is indeed decreasing. NASA is now set for multiple missions back to the moon. The Artemis program will take humans back to the rocky satellite for the first time in over 50 years, with the intention of building a base camp anywhere between the moon's South Pole's angular rocks and gray dust. So the question is, does the return to the moon coincide with the moon decreasing? That is the question at hand, but let's keep digging. There are thousands of cliffs scattered along the moon's surface, averaging a few miles long and tens of yards high. In 1972, Apollo 17 astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt had to ascend one of these cliffs, the Lee Lincoln Fault Scarp, by zigzagging the lunar rover over it. Today, the moon is 50 meters skinnier, and as it shrinks, the moon actively produces moonquakes along the faults. Researchers reanalyzed seismic data they had from the moon to compare with the images gathered by the orbiter. Data from the seismometers placed on the moon during the Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, and 16 missions revealed 28 moonquakes recorded between 1969 and 1977. Researchers compared the location of the epicenters for those quakes with the orbiter imagery of the faults. At least eight of the moonquakes occurred due to activity along the faults. This rules out the possibility of asteroid impacts or rumblings from the moon's interior. Simply put, the moon shrinks as it ages because it gradually loses heat. The moon is cracking because of heat loss, which is causing the moonquakes. The moon is still very active, but is shriveling like a raisin. This was all discovered by superimposing the locations of the epicenters of the quakes onto photos of the thrust faults taken much more recently by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. There's a bit of a gap in the data, but the researchers suggest that the moon is probably still experiencing quakes now. A number of the quakes recorded in the Apollo data happened very close to the faults seen in the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter imagery, also shows physical evidence of geologically recent fault movement, such as landslides and tumbled boulders. The researchers also found that six of the eight quakes happened when the moon was at apogee, the furthest the moon gets from Earth in its slightly elliptical orbit which causes a micromoon as opposed to a supermoon. The effect of Earth's gravity on the moon while at apogee causes extra stress on the moon's crust, which makes moonquakes more likely. Scientists believe that it's very likely these eight moonquakes were produced by faults slipping as stress built up when the lunar crust was compressed by global contraction and tidal forces. This indicates that the Apollo seismometers recorded the shrinking moon, and the moon is still tectonically active. Now, back to why NASA plans on going back to the moon. At a conference this month, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said, And on these increasingly complex missions, astronauts will live and work in deep space and will develop the science and technology to send the first humans to Mars. The astronauts' collection of rocks during the Apollo missions altered how the solar system was perceived by planetary scientists. These recent findings, combined with all of the Apollo missions, emphasize a return. Scientists believe they've only scratched the surface. With a larger network of modern seismometers, 
NASA can make significant strides in the understanding of the Moon's geology. Scientists believe the Moon was once part of Earth, having broken off after a collision with a Mars-sized space rock about 4.5 billion years ago. It's been cooling ever since, shrinking as its interior temperature dips. Combining our new understanding from the data with returning astronauts to the Moon could someday help guide the placement of future Moon settlements far away from moonquake-prone areas. NASA plans on having human visitors back on the Moon by 2024. Until then, they plan on using more seismographs and updated data to understand the Moon's seismic activity.